Hello folks, welcome to our walkie talkie. We are at the famous bridge in Newcastle and the star for our show is Neuron Electric Scooters. Right, everybody knows, absolutely everybody and a dog knows I own an electric scooter and benefit. Right? Now, things are a wee bit different down in uh, England, like places like here, Newcastle, oh yeah, um, Coventry, Liverpool, I think Manchester are en route to having some electric scooters soon, if they haven't already. Now the thing is, these electric scooters, also known as Neurons, are a much akin to our next bikes we have up in Glasgow. Right, they get dumped like unwanted from night dumpster babies. Right, and you can tell one over here that furthest away one in the shop has been dumped. But at least it's been a half professional partner effort. I've seen uh, I've seen scooters parked right across like between the two uh, bits of furniture. Um, I've seen them being dumped across the threshold of doorways like that, and this is all within not even 24 hours, right? It's very very much like our next spikes just dumped at your ass. And especially if one of these scooters get parked in between the bin and the wall, that blocks all form of walking safeties for anybody pedestrian and heaven forbid it, anyone disabled, right? Uh, that could easily cause a a collision uh, that could cause, you know, something to fall over the scooter and collide, smack in the ground, missing teeth, you name it, broken leg, right? Absolutely terrible. Now, there was one exactly doing that thing, locking the width of the pavement, as annotated, right? And all I did was just move the scooter in toward the wall. This is example for uh, location, okay? But aye, the, a guy came shooting at a place called Call Tour, right? And said, you will not move my scooter, right? Spanish guy, say what you want. Uh, and I said, that's not your scooter, that's a Neuron scooter owned by Neuron Mobility. He went, I am moving it. And he forcibly moved it and kind of like parked it like. So at least he'd done some form of effort, but he was getting fairly aggressive uh, verbally. You know, aggressive disagreement, you could call it, right? Luckily, he didn't name call. Luckily, he didn't fret. I didn't fret him. I didn't name call him. It was just uh, he somewhat aggressively spoke to me and uh, forcibly moved the scooter and I said that isn't your scooter, that's owned by a company called Neuron. You know, have to um, re-establish the pronouns, uh, who it belongs to, uh, particulars of ownership, that's what they call it in the courtroom. Right? I had to reinforce the particulars of ownership. Uh, but I ended, just walked away, all that stuff. I had a wee look at a thing called uh, the, the Neuron website, just to see if, if there was anything that they uh, need to know about the scooter and whatever else. The answer is, they said to me, well, not said to me, but it was on the website for issues like this 
you may need advice from the police. I don't really like phoning the police at all. And I only phoned up on on the grounds and tens of uh, advice. And because there have been a lot of things threatening transmitted between either party, uh, and because I had not been threatened with like injury, death, or been assaulted with like a corrosive substance, uh, and absolutely nothing criminal has happened yet. Uh, I have been told as well if I'm going up Dean Street, that's Dean Street there, and it does come out and give even pursuit as in following me, then absolutely yes, I can uh, I can go ahead and raise a complaint. But as I said before, I don't really like calling the police. It's never a good thing. And about 90% of the time are fucking useless anyway. Or, and I mean useless in the essence of you raise a, a crime report, uh, you don't hear anything for about maybe three or four weeks after that. And then they say, right, I, whilst we're away for this four hour, not four hour, four hour week, uh, hullabaloo, checking over things and getting the other side story. We've tried to look up CCTV uh, and we have found CCTV but the camera's dirty. So that renders the investigation dead. Uh, or, uh, or for instance, uh, you raise a complaint, uh, the police take your statement and uh, at the end of it, the police officer is dealing with you is now working in Helen Street and uh, people somewhat forgot your case. Oh, oh, oh! But anyway, that's the kind of jail shit I have to do, please. But heaven forbid you smoke a joint or something. <laughs> Fucking two right vans and some other police car and a whole bunch of uh, CSI, CID, whatever you like to call it, attend and shove things down your mouth and up your arse. Happy days, eh? If you light things up the arse, then that might be okay. But I, you know, like, heaven forbid you, you have your high vision system on one decibel over 74. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, got my pole, his hums are useless. Oh, oh, oh! Right, so yeah, it's a bit crappy, but I'm fine. I was just wanting to uh, do a video articulating some of the downfalls of these, uh, you know, rent a bike, rent a scooter type scenarios. Uh, we had the same situation with uh, Nick's bike. I personally hadn't had any issues with Nick's bike, but Glasgow in general, you know, people dumping uh, the bikes. Uh, and then uh, more, more recently, uh, people breaking the locks of these Nick's bikes and taking them as far as bloody England and whatever else. That actually generally did happen, might I tell you. Uh, and people uh, go to cycling the bike mad with it and uh, parking the bike in really, like, actually very dangerous places such as uh, in railway stations right up at the end of the platform inches away from the trains coming in and out. But anywho, it's 9 minutes 14, I'm going to get off. Um, I love you all, big love to everyone. Uh, only person that's not getting love is a uh, uh, Dafty from Coulter. And anybody who rides one of these neuron scooters. Psst, bye, you're in. <laughs>